it's a freezing cold winter. The new library is lightly glowing from the braziers that burn through the night. However, the temperature still remains fairly tepid within. Despite the freezing cold weather, I want to begin work on the kitchen. The bricks are here, ready to be used. The plan is to build a vestibule that will be used to store prepared meals. We will try to use what tricks we have to chill the vestibule, mainly using a lot of open windows that have shade from the sun. The kitchen itself will have heat from the stove so it's more difficult to chill. The vestibule will have stairways leading up into hallways. These hallways will lead to the Great Hall and to generously sized bedrooms. Once the new build is almost constructed, we can deconstruct the old cobble home. We can begin to move some items out just now. Our defences are struggling to slow down the number of attackers now, so I begin expansion of the trenches. The next day we have began to put a temporary roof on the kitchen and I've almost finished the trenches. The butchering table can be moved indoor and is a prerequisite for creating a kitchen room type. Unfortunately, Kev has still not been fully trained. The training seems to be taking far longer than I was expecting. Perhaps due to low skill in animal handling. Meanwhile, Jespa seems to be hunting something. I guess that's okay, but we did have plenty of food for her. As you can see, the food stores look pretty healthy, with lots of meat. Using the temperature overlay, we can see that the fridge is not winter efficient. 
This wicker door is allowing too much heat from the workshop to get in. We'll need to improve the door and adjust braziers. We have now done enough studying to learn cooking. It's now time to bring down the old home. I then begin to construct the outdoor work area. I have to add structural supports in the kitchen for the bedrooms to be built above. A day or so later, I lay out the blueprint for the first floor. The large room above the outdoor work area will be our great hall. On the opposite side, above the kitchen, will be two generous bedroom chambers. A brutal cold snap has occurred. This is going to be a tough winter for our people as our clothing and shelter is not at a great standard. If we can survive this winter, we can survive any winter. As you can see, the temperature is dropping rapidly. We'll likely need to crank up the braziers to full and burn through our wood supply to stay warm. At this point it makes sense to learn research level 2 and begin to open up new routes of knowledge and understanding to study over the winter. Outside I set up a plan to build a shelter for our wood. This will protect our wood from the weather 
and it will also have a second function of blocking out the sunlight from the vestibule windows. In this new version of Going Medieval, sunlight produces heat and we want to use the windows to try and cool the vestibule for the front end food storage. As the vestibule will be a thoroughfare between the kitchen and the great hall where they will eat the meal. It's looking pretty frosty in many places. However, the fridge is actually not cold enough. It's time to get this door replaced. We'll generally keep these open at all times to try and chill the vestibule as best we can. The wine cellar seems to be functioning perfectly. I'll keep these torches off for now to avoid the added heat they would give off. The next day is a very sad morning. Kim of the sheep has passed away. Winter has been brutal to us, but the work must go on. It's time to design a great hall. If we click the room type legend, we can get a drop down of the requirements needed for each room. We have most of them already. We have a kitchen. We have a workshop. We have a library. We have the church and the temple. We have several chambers, but today we design a great hall. We'll need a big table, plenty chairs, eight wall banners and at least four torches. We'll just aim for the basic requirements for now and we'll improve it over time. And that's the great hall planned. I'll add braziers for warmth too. As busy as we already are, we must improve our defences. Defensive structures technology will grant us access to more powerful traps and to reinforced iron doors. These improved traps require mechanical components. We start the game with a few of these, but we'll need blacksmithing technology to make more of them. Mercifully, the next day the snow begins to melt, 
Our wood supplies were low and our spirits are lifted to see green emerge from the land. We can begin to furnish the new chambers. We have plenty of bricks, so let's get the next floor planned out. The bedrooms are going to be pretty luxury sized, and that's because they will be permanent bedrooms. Spaciousness is one of the factors determining room quality, and higher quality provides higher mood benefits. Happy settlers are more uplifted and will work faster. Their name will turn green when this occurs. The roof will be a large defensive tower, providing us a final defence position in the event that we are heavily sieged. We may later add an infirmary on the roof too, once we have that technology. In a futile attempt I try to learn ice making to produce some ice before the winter fully ends. Spoiler, we do not produce ice before the end of the season. The coming of the spring seems to gift us a new dog called Senna. As we now have both a male and female dog, we may soon see pups. We can now safely turn off all the braziers as the natural temperature should steadily increase. There is little need to keep these bricks here. In place of them, I will make fermenting stations in preparation of the coming fruits we should have. Some footpaths will look aesthetically pleasing and will increase the movement speed of our people. I will avoid building paths where enemies can use them though. Next, we'll need a more accessible mine, one which we can use from within the safety of our walls. Our prospecting suggests that this iron vein in the mountain may run quite deep. A mine shaft here will give us easy access to an abundance of iron ore. We'll build a small bridge over it too. Just as we thought the worst was behind us, something horrifying emerged from the dark corners of the land. The Ravagers. These monsters did not merely want our accrued wealth, they wanted our flesh. We would meet them on the battlefield and we would match their bloodlust with our own.
Fortunately, our defense is held, but we may need to focus on defensive upgrades very soon. The Great Hall is almost complete, not for a few holes in the floor above. A wood supply has slowed the progress a lot. I've been planting additional trees in an attempt to remedy the shortage in the future. We may need to cut down more trees on the outer edges of the land to fix the current shortage. It's a nice surprise when Martin, the 26-year-old ruthless Franklin, decides to join our commune. As a man who enjoys marksmanship, intellectual pursuits and cooking, we gladly welcome the young man. His pursuers are the mounting bandits, who we've not yet met. I'm going to make Martin have some priority as a hauler, a steward and a crafter. A less than pleasant surprise is to find out that Martin is a cannibal. It's unlikely we will accommodate this habit for Martin, and hopefully Martin can understand our apprehension which he likely will as he's an outgoing and charismatic man. It's a good time to plan out a more permanent defensive tower structure at our battle trenches. I will dig out an area here for the new tower. We will not have time to build this before the mountain bandits arrive, as we are expecting them tonight. Our enemy have come with a formidable force.
Those mountain bandits pushed our defences to the brink. It has been a wake-up call for us to focus on defence. The trench will be extended even more. I plant even more trees for the future, and I place hidden stairs for us to be able to circumvent our own maze trap. For now, I will just build the wall and the door and add the stairs last, so as not to offer easy access in the event that we are attacked again soon. For the tower, I will make this a stared tower to allow fast ascent descent time. Just the foundations for now. This is just the beginning of our fortress entrance which we will make every inch of battlefield a hell for our enemies. We make a market stall for merchants and soon after we are visited by a merchant who sells us some additional seed types. From this trade we obtain carrots and beets. It's then time to fully plan the new tower. To allow access to the windows inside, I build wooden platforms on each floor. I add a second hidden stair access. We return to summer clothes and I fix the management then. I add more trenches to really make this area a fortified battle zone. I add a side entrance here to allow us to quickly bypass the maze. I would have liked to have finished the construction this episode, but these large structures take time. Defence has become the new priority, and so the castle must be postponed. I'm keen to finish these projects and more in the next episode. Hope to see you there. Thanks. Bye-bye.